war was was grinding on. This is right, you know, the, the I think about the zero six to about the zero, probably the 2012 time frame in Afghanistan. It was probably some of the bloodiest years there. Yeah. And um, um, I Richie had transferred out of there. I was full time um, flight into IC, so I was in charge of all those guys. Me and Jim Lurk was the was the flight um, flight commander. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, great American to let me kind of run the flight. We do group or flight PT. I was just, we'd run in the back. I just kind of keep them up to speed on things that were going on. Yeah. Um, but we, it, usually, as the so I see that flight. Usually, you're sitting in a in the jock somewhere, um, directing the mission, or you know, you know, doing the doing the paperwork piece, if you will, versus out there on the X um, with the strike force. Mm -hmm. But because of manning issues, of course, I was out there with the strike force, and, and that led into the second Silver Star. And you know, and when I compare and contrast the two Silver Stars, like thinking back on it like in the middle of a firefight you're, I've, I've never been scared during the mission like never it's when i have a moment to reflect afterwards that i get a little scared right sure. it's kind of you know could have should have would have right yeah so the second silver star you know it's funny my dog um mckinley is named after that objective um because it to me that was way more significant of an emotional event than aditha dam was yeah. Um, so McKinley is a great reminder. She, and she, she does, she's outside of JD. She's, she's my other supervisor. It keeps me grounded. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the mission was up into the Kaus Gardens pass. So up in the old Hindu Kush mountains up there, um, the, the training camps everywhere up there, terrorist training yeah. camps and, and where they're staging operations out of. And, uh, it was up so high in the mountains in the summertime that the MH 47s didn't have enough lift to ferry a full, full, combat load up there right but they had a cyclist up there and so that was also my first introduction to the combat um what were they called uh cultural support teams the females oh, okay. on the strike force yep um and, it, and really that interaction completely changed my political outlook on women in combat roles uh because she was you know, every one of them i ever worked with has been amazing um, and capable and um so they and Lauren Bell was with me. It was a two it was a two platoon operation, so company minus operation because of the vast size of the mountain that this training camp was on and the isolation and all these other things. So he is walking up a different way. I infilled with like six people, sat there on the ground on the side of a mountain and waited about forty five minutes. They just kept cycling people from, from Salerno up to the mountain so we could build a combat force. Yeah. So we started walking. And we'd done a lot of walk in this rotation, you know, this is uh, halfway through the rotation, give or take. Um, and uh, start going up the, you know, the, you've been up there, the terrain sucks. Yeah. You know, it's like, cool. it's like, it's like Colorado, you know, it's like going, <laughs> up, it's like climbing up the Pike, Pike Peak, man. It's, that's the kind of yeah. terrain you're in. And it's yep. wooded and it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, in the daytime, it's pretty awesome looking. And uh, we stopped for a minute and, and Casey McGraw was the culture support team, she, a female. She's right. She's a, she was captain at the time. She's right behind me. And we stopped for a second and like, and everybody, and everybody's feeling the pain of climbing up these mountains. You know, it's, you're, you know, you got all your kit on and you've been doing it the whole rotation. So it's nothing new, but it always sucks, you know? Yeah. Always. And uh, <laughs> she stops with, with the, with the little talk, tackle halt and they call it tackle halt, meaning that the point man needs to catch his breath for a minute. <laughs> Right and uh, and uh, and she and she and she grabs the back of my my assault pack thing and she's like she's like, do you see? I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm like, ma'am, let me tell you something right now. Everybody in this forty people is saying the exact same is thinking the exact same thing that you just said to me. I'm like, you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna make it. And she's like, okay. I'm like, just take a minute, catch your breath, just one foot in front of the other. And so we did that, and then we you, we, we we kept going, we kept going kept getting steeper I'm like jesus christ i'm gonna make it <laughs> and so we stopped again and with the assault force you used to turn in you know have your little wrist arm and four trips right you need to give right. it to the guy that's going to lead the patrol the point man he downloads everybody's the route into everybody's gps so everybody has that say about where they're going and um I, we stop and i look at my gps from a little light i'm like we're not on the path we're supposed to be on so I tapped Carmen Bucci, the, the ground force commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Bucci now, up at uh, uh, JBLM. I keep in touch with those guys. Um, I'm like, uh, hey, sir, we're, we are not on the path we're supposed to be on. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And I was just getting ready to confirm with the gunship in the, U, in the U-28 above us when literally all hell broke loose. Um, oh, man. RPGs start coming down the mountainside. RPK, machine gun fire. Um, 
what was weird about it is the center where, you know, the tech P is always in the center with the command helmet, right? Right. And then you got your 11 Bravos up front and you got some picking up the tail end. And then behind me was the attachment. So we had the culture support team, Casey, we had tackle science team guy, um, and a couple other people that were there as, as additions for whatever missions that they brought, they brought together. The FBI was out there with us. For I was going to say any HRT guys. Or... Yep. Yep. And, um, the way what we're situated is like the center of the of the of the formation when we're taking the brunt of the fire of the the enemy fire effectively um and you know and the old adage is and it's in sun tzu as well is if you want to win you want to have the high ground sure. um well we did not have the high ground at all <laughs> in any way shape or form so i don't know what happened man and i and i, and I say it like this like I'm trying to get the AC-130 up on comms. I'm getting nothing on there. So I kind of looked down. The The wires to my 152, my radio, were completely, like, broken off. I don't I don't know how that happened. Um, I would love to say that a bullet went zipping through those lines and, and clipped them. And maybe that is what happened. But I would also probably be remiss on saying it probably got caught on my weapon or something. And I wasn't paying attention in the heat of the moment. Yeah. And probably ripped them. Like, who knows what happened? But the point is. I couldn't use that radio. And and in that moment of kind of like, okay, what do I do? Train, when's my training going to kick in? Instead of doing the smart thing and going over to my other radio and rotating it backwards to the net I should have been on, I decided in my moment of genius on that mountainside, getting his shit pushed in with RPGs and RPKs to hold the wires together and hope for the best. Oh, my God. And, <laughs> and you know what? It worked. Wow. It worked. It didn't work well, but I got a hold of gunship. Um, they came up on the nets. I told them, I said, I need an immediate, need immediate fires. And they yeah. said, and I think I probably had a few F words in there. So it was a pretty <laughs> pretentious moment, contentious moment. Yeah, and yeah. The, and they like, you know, if you, and you've talked to them before, you know how like, the guys in the gunship are like the, the angel's voice, like the, the voice of calm, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm like, they pride themselves on being yes. calm, yeah, being cool. Yes. And, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I need effective fire now, blah 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 blah. I'm like, frontline trace, blah 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 blah. Danger close, karma, you know, Charlie Bravo, blah 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 blah. They're like, listen, listen, we're on the offset of our orbit. Orbit. If we shoot now, those rounds will skip down into you. So we need to make sure that we're on the backside of you. That we're shooting up the mountain into them. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, do that. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, do that. And you were clearly engaged. Like, go for it. Like, just get it done. So, and they did. And I requested a 25 millimeter within 15 meters um, of friendly locations because the 40 millimeter would have fragged us too. Yeah. Um, and I, and man, that 25 millimeter cannon zipping through those trees and into the earth right above us. Like I'll never forget that sound. Like holy, because you hear those things pop, 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 and hit the ground and break those tree branches, and then you hear it behind you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was it was it was crazy, wicked cool to be honest with you. And, yeah. <laughs> and we went to zero visibility because the thing that the way those things were kicking up dirt and and knocking um, uh, branches and stuff off the the, the 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 trees up there. That we and I, I would literally stand up to make sure those rounds were impacting where they needed to go while everybody else was in the prone. Um, about that time, yeah, man, that's, I, I didn't looked, think about that. You have to, you have to observe yeah. the fires, and make sure they're doing the, yeah. at the right in the right place. Yeah. Jeez. About that same time, before the second danger close strike, um, I looked behind me and the the the, the attachments, uh, Casey and the rest of the folks that were that, that just kind of like they showed up and like here's your attachments. Uh, they were kind of like walking around each other, like bumping in each other, like bouncing back and forth. Like they had no clue what to do. So what I did was I grabbed each one of them by, you know, you have the little the little drag handle on the back of your body armor, right? I grabbed right. them by that. I pushed them into the ground. I said, point your M4 that way. And if anything moves over there, shoot. And I did that with each one of them. So I took charge of that element there, right? And then I went back to Carmen Bucci, briefed the fire support plan. He approved it. We did it some more. And about that time, I'm looking... He's in the he's 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 up on the knee again, and he's trying to monitor where the front line trace is, um, and doing his ground force command thing. And I look at him, and I see these two jamokes bounding down the hill at us, and they're going to tree to tree to tree like they had rehearsed this, and they're shooting at us, and the bullets are smacking right up in front of us. Yeah. So I stepped in front of Carmen, and I and I pushed him kind of back down, 
and I brought him my M4 and I smoked those two dudes. I killed both those guys. Yeah. Um, and, and he looked at me, he's like, what was that for? I'm like, those two guys were bound down the hill. He's like, oh, okay. About that time, I did another danger close. And I hit really, really close, right where it needed to go. And I was on a knee at this time. So I knew, I, at this point, I knew that the rounds were good about where they needed to go. Mm-hmm. And Carmen Bucci was on the ground. He's in the prone. He had his hands over his helmet. And I could re- I remember him screaming at me um, through all the stuff going. I was like, Striker, what the fuck are you doing? And I and I looked down at him. And I, and I, I kind of pulled him up. I'm like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, sir. And that's why I got your initials. And I fist pounded him. We fist bumped. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, we're fine, sir. You're with the best, you know. Um, and I, I didn't mean that Tom Case was the best. I meant like. We're gonna take care of you collectively, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't know how he took it. Like, who knows? <laughs> so about oh that God. time, this, I, guy's, this guy's confident. All right. <laughs> and I was pretty good. after that first danger close strike. I was pretty damn confident, right? Yeah. And I man. Just smoked those two dudes coming down the mountain. So I was, I was like, this is this is easy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I told him, I said, hey, sir, listen, I I've got to get up the mountainside. I got I want to get up and link up with the front front element that's close to the top. Yeah. Um. He's like, he's like, okay, do that. But, J.D., I did try passing that gunship off to the FO I had in the assault force to Ford Observer. Never got him up on comms. Even when I realized, hey, idiot, use your other radio. You know, <laughs> right. I did have a moment of clarity, like, oh, you, yeah, good job, my son. So I, at the uh, time, you were just probably, it was, you're in the moment, and you're like, you know, it, sometimes those moment, little man. things escape us, you know, when, when we're in that heated yeah. environment. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it'll catch, you know, you train for it, so it does catch up to you eventually, right? <laughs> right. Um, so I started going up the hillside and man, this is like 60% great. It was ridiculous. So some of these areas like hand over hand, you know, up on hands and knees and I, and I walk and I, and I crawl really, um, in a very fast, fast, you know, kind of bear crawl, um, right past the FO who was a young PFC, mm-hmm. um, E3. And I was like, Hey man, I have been trying to pass you the gunship for the last however many minutes. And I got no response from him. He was just sitting there with his knees up into as far as, far as he could into his chest with his kid on and just sitting there like completely in shock, man. I was like, oh, man. And I was so angry at the moment. I was so mad. And I was like, I don't have time to be mad at this kid right now. Like, right. We can deal with that on the backside. So I got up the hill, really the mountain. I got there next to my buddy, Danny. Um, Danny James from, from um, um, he was with the recce platoon that was, that was hanging out with us up there. Okay. And, I, and I got up there, I'm like, uh, about that time, I put a net call out and said, everybody turn on your strobe lights so the gunship knows exactly where everybody is. And we did that so they had the, the Christmas light effect down there on the ground. And you sure. can see it in their, gun, in the, in their cam footage. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, did a couple more strikes, um, kind of pushing the pattern out, not so close anymore. A couple danger close to 40 millimeter, but starting to get out there a little ways. And uh, and I said, well, how come and I got up there with them? I'm like, how come you guys, I, I don't remember what the conversation was. I'm like, how come we haven't advanced all of them? He's just like, well, there's some guys in the tree line over there. Don't know exactly where they're at. We just know they're like right there in the tree line. I'm like, hmm. I said, uh, okay. I said, you got any grenades? He's like, yeah. I'm like, give me. I said, give me one. So he gives me a grenade. And I pulled the pan, popped the spoon, and I threw it in that tree line about 20 meters away. It fucking goes off. And I walk in there and shoot two more dudes. And, uh, they got their legs were fragged pretty bad, so they weren't any 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 ability to other do anything but shoot back at that time. And yeah. I walked out and I walked out there. I told him I was going in. I walked out there. I'm like, it's all clear now. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? Jesus. I'm like, it's all clear now. I'm like, we can go forward. He's like, did did the Air Force guy just throw a grenade and fall up with his M4? <laughs> I'm like, yes, the Air Force guy did. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably so mad they're like i man i should have done that darn it well this guy you know the, the thing is jd it, it's it's not a blow to their capability not at all no it's a blow to the not a blow but it's the fact that at the end of the day an air force operator because i had people like you i had people like you i had people like brandy and schleich and kenny and some other people who tell you and they teach you and they expect you and i think this is kind of ingrained in the tech p just across the board to think for yourself and to think through the solution um whereas outside of certain units within the army there's still a certain level of like i gotta wait to kind of be told what to do yeah um and i think that that was probably one of those moments like they knew what they needed to do they're just kind of waiting on um 
the go ahead from from other right. if you will get some guidance um, you know like is this the right thing to do yeah exactly and i was kind of like f that i don't have time for this like let's go <laughs> um so danny's like did the air force guy just throw i'm like yes the air force guy did <laughs> and we had a couple other guys right out that me and danny engaged and killed a couple more dudes <laughs> with our m4s but i what karma bucci comes up and he's like hey man on the air on the radio the ground force square he's like hey i need you to come link up with me again i'm like okay where are you he's like you hear the saw I'm like, yep, I hear the, the 249 rocking. It sounded like about 150, 200 meters away up on the ridge line. I'm like, yep. He's like, this is where I'm at. Come over to me. I'm like, okay. So then I started thinking to myself, he wants me to walk 200 meters by myself through the forest on a mountainside that has enemy on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to end up on YouTube. Um, <laughs> right. So for the wrong reasons. So I, I called him back on the net. I was like, hey, sir, I'm going to wait till I have time to have an escort to your location. Um, I'm not going to walk over there by myself. He's like, nope, good call. Totally, totally cool, man. Got it. So we ended up leaking up. So this firefight goes on pretty much all night long. I ended up finally able to pass the gunship to Lauren Bell. He had his own little thing going on kind of down in a valley below us. Uh, yeah. Not nearly as frantic, not nearly as, as heavily engaged, but he was able to, to, to neutralize fairly quickly and effectively with the gunship down there. I think we went to the gunship and it went home. Sun came up. And this is the funniest Winchester part of the story. Gunship. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, this is the funniest part of the story. I mean, man, it's like <laughs> the, the sun comes up, we're down there. We're doing uh, sensitive sites, exploitation. Everything's dead except us. Um, we're blowing stuff in place, lots of weapons and, and you know, uh, uh, explosive stuff up there where they're building IEDs and doing whatever else. And lots of weapons. And we're just blowing up the place and they have the Apaches on station and, and I'm standing next to uh, uh, the ground force commander and his, his radio operator. And we're just standing there and uh, the radio operator is like, he's like, hey, certain case, uh, Striker 3-0, I was 3-0 November, Striker 3-0, Jim Lurk, our, our ALO, our flight commander, is like, wants to talk to you on the side. I'm like, okay. So I just unplug my headset, plugged into his. I'm like, Hey, go go for striker three zero, and he's like, uh, or three zero. Remember, he's like, hey, I need you to ask the the Apaches to call back to the brigade to get um, permission to extend their 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 orbit time up there, their play time with you. And I was like, you know, I just been through a pretty significant emotional event, man. Like, I I was g generally worried in that fight, right? Yeah. Because um, they had thrown grenades down. I had a grenade um, blow up about ten meters um, uh, from my position that took a little chunk out of my helmet. Um, when I was in the prone, uh, but fortunately it was those those old Chinese plastic ones, you know, uh -huh. so not nearly as effective as like a, a, a M72 grenade that we have. Um, so I'm like, um, hey, copy all, uh, request that the ALO and the jock <laughs> pick up the phone, call the brigade supporting and speak to the S3 Air and get an extension copy and uh, I, this is going off on the satellite net so the entire task force can hear this conversation <clears throat> so he's like copy i'm like okay and you know carmen bush is like what was that about i was like oh they just want to extend the time of the apaches but they gotta get approval through their brigade i would i'm just asked the alo to be an alo and do that you know that's what the first thing i was thinking like why is he calling you to do that like, yeah why wouldn't, you know. <laughs> so a couple minutes go by and Colin, the rto is like sorry the alo wants to talk to you again Damn it. Okay. I'm like, go for striker. It says the exact same thing. I need you to ask the Apaches to call down and get an extension request. I'm like, I'm telling you, if you guys want them extended, which I don't believe I need, call the brigade talk and ask them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And then it goes quiet. And then a couple minutes go by. <laughs> like this happens three times, JD. <laughs> and then a couple, a couple minutes go by. And then the call in the heart heels like, certain case, uh, Strike Force Commander wants to talk to you. I'm like, God damn it. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go for Striker. He's like, he's like a Striker, whatever, Lima Oscar, whatever the call sign was back there. He's like, yeah. like, you will coordinate an extension request with the brigade. Out. I'm like, well, a major just told me that I have to do this. So Roger that. So I call the Apaches. I'm like, this is what I'm being told to do. They're like, well, how much time do you guys have left? I'm like, sir, when's expo time? He's like, we're gonna be out here in ten minutes. I'm like, ten minutes. I'm like, dude, you're, you're fine. We got twenty five minutes of time left before we have to farm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we expo in the daytime. Fly back to Salerno. Quick flight off the mountain. Yeah. And I'm like, 
I know something's coming. So I, I take off my kid and they assault talk. I put it away. I walk into the jock there because I know that we're going to have a conversation about this. And uh, Major Magsley, Toby Magsley, really good American. He's Colonel Magsley. He might be one star now, but he's a really awesome guy. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's like, hey, TC, can I, uh, can I talk to you in the VTC room? I was like, yes, sir. I, I know what this is about. So we go back there. He's like, he's like, hey, man, listen, um, I can't really have you talking to leadership like that on the set, man, because the entire entire task force can can hear that. I'm like, sir, I just spent all night in a freaking fire fright from hell. And you're asking me to do the ALO's job. That's why yeah. he exists. <laughs> my my concern is not that I'm not capable of doing that, but I'm with the ground force commander and we're doing other things. I'm not just talking to just helicopters. Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's like, well, no, I, I know you had a significant emotional event last night. He's like, and I can appreciate that. He's like, nice work, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you that if you talk to leadership like that again, I'm probably going to have to send you home. And I looked at him and I said, well, sir, that would make Mrs. Case happy. Seeing this is my 12th trip out here. I'd be okay yeah. with that too. And he goes like, I thought you would say that. 